Holy Father, Pope, Pope uh, Pius XII, established it and said it was to be on the 31st day of May. It was to be the, cr the crowning <coughs> of the May celebration, that it should have its culmination, this beautiful month of May, in honoring the Holy Mother of God as truly our queen. And of course, the whole notion of Mary as a queen, and we think of the book of Revelation, the woman standing on the moon with the sun over her head, 12 stars around her head. Uh, we think of this image of the queen of heaven who intercedes for us, who brings forth to the world the child Christ. But we can never understand this feast without understanding the primary title of that of mother of God. And the title mother of God is a very important title. It was given to Our Lady at the Council of Ephesus in the fourth century. Very early on, uh, the church recognized that there were Christological heresies springing up all over the place. And the way to stamp out these heresies was to honor the mother in such a title that you couldn't refute it because it was the fullness of a theological thought. Now, I was listening the other day on some of the YouTubes that go by and they're recommended to me. I don't know how I got recommended to this one, but it was a, a Philippine pastor, Protestant, Philippine Protestant pastor, railing against how Catholics refer to Mary as the mother of God and what a heretical thing this is. And he's going through all the scriptures condemning this title. And you could see, and sadly enough, the Philippine people sitting behind him in the choir, they were all shaking their heads. And, and you have family members that believe this. And he was railing and raving against it. And as I listened for about five minutes to his argument, uh, he was a heretic. He was embracing Arianism, pure and simple. He wouldn't think he was an Arian, but he was an Arian. Because if you deny Mary that title, you're going to fall into heresy, pure and simple. And so when we do not call Mary the mother of God, then we will always be a heretic. Because this preacher said, Mary is the mother of Jesus. And is Jesus God? Yes, but Mary is not the mother of God. And so one, the logic was all messed up. And then as he began to talk, he just basically, in a very subtle way, I picked it up rather quickly, he was promoting Arianism, right, and separation. And you can't do that. You can't separate the divinity of Christ from his humanity because they are perfectly one. So very beautifully demonstrated uh, in the offertory of the mass. That's why uh, the priest is to take just a drop of water. I use the old, what's known as a scroop spoon. I take the spoon, just a tiny little drop of water. And the whole prayer is that even as this drop of water goes into the wine and it becomes inseparable from the wine, so our blessed Lord came down from heaven, assumed human nature in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and the two became inseparable. Once the water hits the wine, you can't find the water again. It's, 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 it's gone. Uh, and so the humanity of Christ is swallowed up in divinity, and the divinity of Christ is also taken up in humanity. And so what is born of the Virgin Mary is God and is man. And so just as we can say that Mary is the mother of Jesus, meaning we think of the humanity of Christ, so we must say that Mary is also the mother of God. And as a mother, then Mary has certain privileges, <coughs> as we hear in the gospel today, the woman who is extolling Mary because she's the mother of the earthly Jesus. What a wonderful mother you had, and how blessed your mother is. And so this woman is extolling Mary because she gave birth to such a man and the Lord corrects her immediately. He says, no, blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. And who better than the Holy Virgin Mary heard the word and kept the word quite literally uh, within her own bosom, with her own body. She preserved the word, gave birth to the word. And so Mary is that perfect disciple who is both mother of the man Jesus and mother of God in one. Because you can never separate the two without getting yourself into theological trouble. It's, you can't do it. Uh, and so sometimes if you ever run into a Protestant and they want to talk about that, it's a lot of fun because they can't argue. Because if they do, they become heretics. Uh, because you, you, you lose that idea that this is God and man without distinction, without separation. God is totally united with man in, in the person of Christ. He is what we call the theanthropic person, the, the God-man. And so we consider again this beautiful title. And as a queen, Mary intercedes for the church. But as queen, 
Mary also is, again, that idea of she is the mother of the church, and that's what happens at the cross. Uh, Jesus, as he is ready to make the supreme sacrifice, the final thing he does is he gives the church a mother. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. And he doesn't even, he says, woman, behold your, or, 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 woman, behold your son, uh, in indicating to John. He doesn't even call her mother, he calls her woman. Because just as Eve, the woman, was the mother of all the living, so Mary, through the merits of Christ, will be the mother of all the redeemed. And so we consider that every grace, every blessing comes to us, not as the originator, but as the channel of grace, the Holy Virgin Mary. Every grace is originated in the passion of Christ and by the cross of Christ. But all those graces flow to us from this most holy mother, and so today we honor her. At the end of May, the last day of May, we honor her in this most beautiful title. And then we anticipate tomorrow, uh, I said last week, I thought this was First Friday, but it wasn't next week, it'll be First Friday. But we honor our Blessed Mother with this very beautiful title of Mother, Queen of the whole church, Queen of the universe. And then tomorrow we begin the month of June. <clears throat> now again, like so many things, like this uh, Philippine pastor railing against the title Mother of God, we also consider that the month of June has also been hijacked, uh, known as Pride Month. Uh, and you know, there's an old saying in the scripture, pride cometh before the fall, very true. Uh, but as Christians, we celebrate the Holy Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so the month of June is the month of the Sacred Heart. Not that we have pride, because pride goeth before the fall, but we have humbly reverence the heart of Jesus. Uh, this weekend, we're going to give out little badges. Somebody made a thousand of them. We're going to give out little wear it during the month of June. Uh, that's our symbol for the month of June. And hopefully people will ask you, what is that about? You tell them, month is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. If you caught it on the uh, internet, uh, there's a, they bought the billboard for the whole month of June. Uh, there's a big billboard right in Times Square. You look up and there it is, one of the big billboards that are way up high. And it's the picture of the Sacred Heart. It says, June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Uh, and so that's a beautiful thing. If you get a chance to look for that, uh, you'll see it. A very beautiful thing. One of the Catholic groups had that put up. And so we consider uh, this month that is ahead of us. We also think of the month that is behind us. Uh, in which we have honored the Holy Virgin Mary. And then it, the great climax of that devotion of May is that we honor her in this most beautiful title as Queen of the world and of all creation. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost.